you may have noticed a little bit of work going on in uh, in Martinsburg, and you'll be noticing more as uh, as time goes by. Diego Losada is behind a lot of that work. He joins us in studio. Diego, good morning to you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And Christian Allison, who is your marketing person, you're telling me, right? Christian, good morning. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me as well. Thank you both for coming in. Uh, Diego, uh, take us uh, to the beginning. Uh, for, for the work that you're doing downtown, why Martinsburg? Okay, it's a, it's a long story. I'll try to keep it as short as I possibly can. So many years ago, I started thinking about uh, making investments. And I, I lived in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, and I started looking around where to go and, and make some uh Make some investments where I could have, where I could make an impact, where I could make a difference, and and be a part of something. And it was about 12 years ago, and I, I stopped by Frederick, and I found a, some very cool properties in Frederick, and I was about to execute my first purchase in Frederick. And my boss at the time, I was working to Fannie Mae, and my boss at the time came to me and said, "Wait, stop." I need you. She just got promoted into a super senior executive job. She offered me a promotion to go with her, so I stayed with and um, and did not execute on my idea of purchasing that property in Frederick. Well, a lot happened, corporate career, growth, all that fun stuff. And then um, during COVID, you're sitting there working from home, thinking about what you're doing in life and spending a whole lot of time in front of a computer and thinking about what you could be doing in, in your life. I started thinking about that dream again of going back and investing and, and being my, being an investor and being a part of something of growth, of, of, of making a difference. And, um, I went back to Frederick only to find that. Frederick had taken off and it had gone to places that I could not even imagine when I first stopped by. So, um, so um, I had missed on the opportunity. They did amazing things over there and they have really created an environment, a community and uh, a very inviting place for people, not only locals, but people from around the area to come visit. And that's exactly what I wanted to be a part of. But I felt I, mi I missed that train at that mm -hmm. point. So I started looking around and started going to different places around kind of 50 miles around D.C. where, where I kind of live and, and 100 miles. And, and then one Sunday morning, I stopped by Martinsburg. And if you've been to Martinsburg on a Sunday morning, it is a very calm, quiet place. But it has these majestic, beautiful buildings and architecture and the and the town was just looking so incredibly amazing and we were coming we we're in the tail end of covid and it had a lot of empty commercial spaces and i said this looks to me like the place where a lot of really good things can happen and um and then i went back i sat at my computer and started doing some research and studying all about all i could learn about the economic and the community and the growth and the schools and and the infrastructure and the and the companies coming on 81 and Procter and Gamble and all that fun stuff. And I said, "Wow, this at Martinsburg is really a place where where things can really happen." And then West Virginia has this wonderful story behind Wild and Wonderful and 6 minutes away from downtown Martinsburg, you are in the most beautiful country in the in, in the United States. So I so I felt I felt that that that's what compelled me to come into Martinsburg. That's a great story. Uh, if you could uh, summarize some of the projects you're working on, the changes you're making to the uh, real estate in Martinsburg. Okay, so we started with um, with some residential and commercial spaces, and um, and that was that was kind of our introduction into understanding the market to, mm -hmm. to see what kind of how can we get some really cool residential units downtown where people enjoy living downtown live and play downtown and go into the downtown restaurants and and hang out in, in Martinsburg so that was our objective in, at the first and then we needed to occupy these commercial spaces as, as I mentioned most of these were all empty and they had become storage units so we decided to revamp them invest in and do new floors new paint new make them really attractive for people that wanted to start their businesses to take a chance downtown Martinsburg and um, and that started working and that started catching a little bit of fire and and we were able to rent our commercial spaces what we were not able to do at that point was attract a whole lot of restaurants and one thing that we learned from the experience that you see in frederick and in winchester is the restaurant 
uh, and the food industry is going to call a lot of people to come downtown and start walking around, right? And what we wanted was people walking with the strollers, going from an ice cream place to a restaurant, and then stopping by the boutiques, right? So, mm -hmm. so we weren't able to attract a whole lot of the restaurant uh, industry, and that's kind of how we ended up in the project we're currently working on, which is the Garage on King, which is going to be a food hall, which uh, on King Street and Raleigh Street, that is going to have nine different restaurants. It's, it's kind of like a food hall is similar to a food court, but, but where you have multiple offerings. But instead of fat food, fast food restaurants and people coming in, eating, and leaving as soon as they can, it's more of an upper scale local offerings. We're going to have a little bar. We're going to have a dessert place where we want people to come and enjoy all the local offerings from barbecue food to treats to Creole to New Orleans style food and be able to gather around with their friends and family and, and, and hang out downtown Martinsburg. Is it, is it similar to the Carroll Creek project in Frederick and the, the strip of restaurants they have along Carroll Creek? It, 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 it could be considered similarly, but all these are housed in one single building. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of more closer to a food court where you have kind of nine different restaurants, a common sitting area inside, a common sitting area outside, and then we have a little bar where people can go and, and, and get their local beers and local wines or their, their signature cocktails as well. Jason. Diego, I, I love the project. It's a great idea. I, I think it's going to be incredibly successful. I'm glad that you brought it to Martinsburg. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the food vendors that you have lined up, and, and are you still looking for others? And, and if you are looking, what are you looking for? Okay, so we are very lucky and we found a bunch of people who share our vision for what we're trying to do with downtown martinsburg so we started doing some informational sessions and we had a bunch of interest from different local restaurants and one of the things we want to be able to be at, at the garage is also an incubator so there's a lot of talent out there there's a lot of chefs there's a lot of people with ideas of, of creating their businesses but they may not have a whole lot of money to do it and today, starting a restaurant can be very, very, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars expensive. So, and people have their own jobs in their lives. So we have been, a, we, we, we have kind of worked with experienced folks that are already in the Martinsburg market, like the Mountaineer Meat Smokers. And, um, and we've also worked with the food trucks, like the OG Kitchen, that they do our chicken sandwiches and kind of our, more of our soul food. And then we have also um, a Creole from New Orleans style cooking from uh, Leesburg that they're going to be joining us. And then we're going to have some gumbo and some sausage and shrimp kind of combinations that are going to be great. And um, the green pineapple from uh, Shepherdstown is also going to join us with some Asian fusion combinations. And uh, so they have sushi Ritos to pho to, uh, to like the teas and all that fun stuff. And then we have um, some folks from Winchester that do the South American Argentinian empanadas. They're, the Gringo Gordo are also going to come to us. They have a very um, successful kind of business on the on the pedestrian mall and, and we wanted to invite them over to join us here in martinsburg as well and um and we have a cereal bar treats um food stall offering all kinds of combinations of sweets that are based on cereal so you're going to see your milkshake with lucky charms or your donuts kind of sprinkled with uh fruity pebbles and uh, and that kind of stuff is a very creative idea it's been very successful in other food halls across the nation um and then we have a cafe a deli that's going to be in the front of the building that's going to open from early in the morning and I, our vision for that is going to be the place where people can come and do con cafe things in the morning and gather with their friends family or do business meetings and just sit around have coffee and, and discuss items on your agenda so um we have we have that and then we have a bar with um with and stoney's that has its place on martin street downtown martinsburg we've asked stoney's to kind of launch the bar within the garage with some local offerings related to kind of try to get as many local beers as we possibly can, try to get some local wines, and so, so that we can invite people that are from here 
to enjoy their product. It's their home team. And then when we invite people that are not from here to try what we got to offer. So, um, and, and to, f the f to answer the last question, we are currently, we had a juice bar and our lady was from um, from DC and we uh, Christian, our marketing specialist here, he met her at the Cherry Blossom. When he went down to DC for the Cherry Blossoms, he saw her, she had a juice truck. He's like, we need you over there in West Virginia. We need you at the garage. And she um, she had agreed to come with us, and we unfortunately it's too far for her to commute all the time to mm -hmm. to come to Marchburg. Mm -hmm. So we currently have an opening, and we're working with a few potential candidates to to, to fill that. You mentioned that the cafe would be open for breakfast, and so that made me think about the hours of operation for for most of the food vendors in there. Can you talk a little bit about what you expect the hours of operation to be? So. So we're expecting we're expecting to open the cafe around seven seven thirty in the morning, so people can kind of come in. They're coming in King Street. They're coming in Raleigh. They're coming into downtown Martinsburg. They can stop by and get their coffee. It'll have a little kind of stop window on the outside where they can get their coffee kind of as they're going on 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 travel, or they can come in and sit down with us. So we're expecting to be open for breakfast at seven thirty every day, and then. And then in the weekends, we're expecting to have breakfast offerings starting from kind of targeting into your, your brunch type of a market, okay? And, um, and then um, we're, for all the, the major food vendors, we, we would like for them to start operating around 11.30 for, for, the, for the lunch menu and go all the way through dinner. And, and maybe close around. They, they can start deciding if they want to close their own stalls around 8 p.m., or they want to stay open. The bar is likely going to stay open 8, 9, 10 p.m., depending on the day of the week. So just so I can uh, visualize it in my head a little bit, and I have been to your building as it was uh, sure. very in its, its early stages. Uh, but so as you walk in um, and you get to the, the area where the nine different food vendors are, uh, and then so, so folks will be able to go up if, if John and I want to go to lunch together one day and, and uh, he wants one type of food and I want another, essentially we would each go up to our own counter, we would order food, we could go sit together, then we could go um, to the bar and, and grab a beer and, and take that back to our table or have that brought out to us. Is that, do I, am I understanding that set up correctly? Absolutely. That, so that's, that's absolutely one scenario of the vision. The other scenario is for the more technologically advanced folks, they can just scan a barcode on their table and it'll pop up the the different restaurant offerings that you can go and you can say, hey. Well, like, Jason yeah. could do that, but yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Like, yeah, so that's You can walk up to the counter, <laughs> Jason can sit there, scan the code, get his food, and then get back to his emails and texts. Diego, um, obviously the Interwoven Project is not your project. The, the Interwoven Project is gonna have uh, several different uh, market rate uh, residential units in it. But how important is a project like that to a downtown commercial investor? So that project is huge. So that is one of the most important projects that Martinsburg could have. And its success is fundamentally important to all of us for, for the, the development of, of our community. And that's one of the main reasons why we're launching this food hall two blocks away from, from the interwoven project is because we want to make sure that when they are ready to put their units into the market when they're trying to attract people to move into their space we have an attractive martinsburg downtown that they can come and play and have fun with so when you're looking to rent out a, a unit at the interwoven as soon as they deliver it they're like why would i move downtown martinsburg well we got a bunch of things for you to do we, mm -hmm. you could go to stoney's you could go to bricks you could go to the thai place you could go to the boutique restaurants uh, boutique places we or you could come to the garage as well right we got offerings of food and everything so we wanted to make sure that the garage was there in place for the interwoven project to be successful and then that creates that synergy that you're talking about jason which is our success their success is all of our success for the community so yeah. you have to have a captive audience for a successful downtown and in order to have a captive audience they've got to have a reason to be downtown exactly so it, it kind of the, 
It yeah. works both ways. Diego, my final question, uh, because I know my wife is listening. You uh, recently uh, purchased the old post office building <laughs> on King Street as well. And so my wife wants a children's museum more than anything uh, in Martinsburg so, so she can take our son Berkeley. Uh, what are your plans? For, do you have any plans for that? Or, or what, do you, what do you think so, of what to do with the post office? So absolutely. So that's one of those buildings that when I was driving that Sunday morning, through Martinsburg, I was like, wow, look at this. It's majestic. It's 1895. The architecture is beautiful. The architect also designed this, uh, the, the capital in, in uh, Georgia. And uh, so it has a beautiful history. It's great. It's red. It, 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 it looks like a castle. So um, that's one of those. The reason I ended up purchasing this building is because I, was, I, I wanted to make sure that it ended up in in, in good hands to do good projects with so one of the one of the criteria that i like to apply when i'm thinking about what how do we use the different buildings within martinsburg is how do we maximize the number of people that get to use the 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 property right and one of the things i I wasn't very crazy about was making our our buildings into the storage uh, kind of where you have those mini storages where people pay $50 a, a month, I mean, no maintenance, and investors can make some money out of them. But I wanted our buildings to generate economic movement within downtown Martinsburg. So Christian over here launched a, um, a, a contest to try to understand what the community thought good uses for that building would be. And yes, we got the Children's Museum for sure, and your wife can rest assured that's one of our one of our um, one of our top contenders contenders for for what we do with the building. We had other ideas. We had mixed use where you have combination of residential, maybe some some uh, some retail downstairs. We had another idea to make it into kind of a venue. They have one in. Um, and what is it, the monument over in Winchester where they have live events and they do concerts and, and things like that. So we have different ideas that we're still contemplating to see which one is going to meet that criteria to generate the most usage by the community of the property and generate the largest economic. Now, I, I'm losing track here. Which building is the, the federal food? courthouse? Oh, uh, that the, one the is the Dunn and Cyber. Uh, huh? The food court? Yeah. And the Dunn and Cyber. Uh, where the appliance store used to be. Oh, okay, yeah. I used to buy all my stuff there. For sure. I mean, it was. Yeah, a they were. They place. were good. I, I was sorry to see them go, but I'm glad to see you're there to replace them. Well, yeah, exactly. To to get some people to get usage of the building, to get people to enjoy it, and 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 take advantage of the of the existing buildings we already have. What are some of your target dates for completions, Diego? So our target date for completion, we want it to be open at the beginning of the summer. And, um, and like everything in construction, there's delays all over. And, and I'm going to use a phrase that I hated about six months ago, but I'm going to use it now, which is supply chain concerns and things. I mean, just ordering the kitchen equipment. We have, we have six hoods and ovens and all that stuff. It took longer than we expected for us to get that into the warehouse. So mm-hmm. we also have some permits that we're, that we're working with the city today and, uh, and they're doing their evaluation and we're making sure because of the nature of the project is going to be in the middle and we want to make sure that we're, com- we're, 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 we're checking all the boxes and doing all the work that we need to do. So we still have a little bit of, uh, of work to do to finalize our opening date, but we're targeting the end of August to the beginning of September. And do you have any uh, parking concerns? Uh, obviously, downtown is a, is a parking issue for many people because of meters and that's already an issue. Some people won't go down because uh, town just because of that. But talk to me about parking issues. Okay. Because what happens as Martinsburg continues to grow? We finish these residential units. More people come downtown. They got to have a place to put the car. They do. So parking is a great problem to have. So I, I know this will sound a little controversial, but if we are having a parking problem downtown Martinsburg, it means we're doing something right. It means we're revitalizing our downtown. It means people are coming. They want to come park their cars and spend their money and help the local businesses thrive. So I'm happy about if we if we generate a parking problem, I'm happy about that. But we have to have a solution. So the garage, for example, the garage has 30 parking spots, which in peak times will not be sufficient to serve the garage. 
But we also would like people, like they do in Frederick, like they do in, uh, in Winchester, and like they do everywhere else in other big metros that have multiple businesses around, we would like people to park their cars in one of the three or four different um, parking lots that the city has created and walk around and walk to the to the restaurants and walk to the boutiques and walk into the different shops and get get you know walk to the garage all the way on uh, on King Street and walk all the way back to our bricks and uh, and all the businesses are on, on Queen Street and that will create the foot traffic that we need for our local businesses to thrive as well Diego we are just about out of time anything else you can relay to our audience right now about what's coming up uh, so please um, Good things are happening in Martinsburg. We're trying to do uh, a whole bunch of stuff. And we, we need your help. We need the community to come out and enjoy what we have. Mar downtown Martinsburg is going uh, places. It's super safe. It's super cool. And uh, please come downtown and spend some time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Christian, thank you for coming in. you got to say something because you haven't said anything yet. Uh, yeah, just follow the Garage on King at the Garage on King on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, like all of our posts and just share and get the message out. Good stuff, Diego. I'm sending you out with Frank Sinatra, which you were singing to yourself before we started the segment. Okay, in my voice. Uh... Here we go.